In this video, we are going to demonstrate how to install the in-wall power cord and cable kit using the air-free method. Another method, called the standard installation method, is shown in another video. Thank you for purchasing the flat screen TV in-wall cover and power kit. There are two versions of this kit on the market. The easiest way to know which version you have is to look at the faceplate. Either it is round, or it is an oval. Both kits offer the same features and performance, but the installation instructions are slightly different, so make sure to match your kit with the faceplate shown here. This installation video is divided into two sections. Please go to the section of the video that matches your version. You will see a round or an oval faceplate in the bottom left-hand corner. The video start times are also shown here. This product helps to beautify your home, allowing you to place one to four television cables within the wall. The air-free method also restricts the flow of expensive conditioned air to the outside of the building envelope and provides a cable tube or conduit within the wall to make it easy to add or remove cables as needed. For example, if you had a gaming console and you wanted to move it to a different room, you can simply pull the cables out and replace them without reinstalling the system. Note, the standard installation method mentioned earlier allows for installation of more than four cords. The kit includes two boxes, two faceplates, an NM cable, a power cord, as well as two inserts seen here that will not be used in this method. These inserts are for the standard installation method described earlier. The kit also includes a cable tube or conduit, which is actually comprised of two tubes and a coupler. Also included are a hole saw, a layout stencil or template, some rubber bands, and a fish tape or a fish stick. Tools needed for the installation include a level, a pencil, a utility knife, a tape measure, and a Phillips screwdriver or a drill with a Phillips bit. You may also want to have a stud finder handy. Locate the studs within the wall in the vicinity of the television. The boxes need to be spaced at least 2.5 inches away from any stud. Mark the nearby studs. Most studs are on 16 inch centers. Occasionally, depending on the construction of the house, other studs may be present. It's better to know where they all are before beginning the installation. You also need to have a receptacle nearby. You may want to place your bottom box such that it is level with the receptacle. Measure and mark the wall accordingly. Place another mark on the wall that is at least 2.5 inches from the nearest stud to make sure the box installs easily. Now transfer that mark up the wall to a location behind the television. Although not shown here, it is a good idea to mark the bottom of the television on the wall. Place a faceplate on the wall and make sure that your top mark is well above the bottom of the television so that the faceplate does not show after installation. Using the layout stencil provided in the kit, mark the drill holes onto the wall. At the bottom hole, use the lower center mark in the stencil. The lower mark is the center of the bottom box and faceplate. At the location of the top box and faceplate, the upper center mark is the center of the box and faceplate. Use the stencil to mark the drill holes onto the wall. This kit has a maximum installation distance of 60 inches. If your center to center distance is less than 60 inches, you will need to trim the cable tube. Measure the distance between the two boxes. Make sure to use the top center mark of the top box and the bottom center mark of the bottom box. As stated before, this kit has a maximum and preset installation distance of 60 inches. It's important to note that the cable tube assembly actually measures less than 60 inches but the boxes are built so that when the whole product is assembled, the total distance is 60 inches. In our installation example, the installation distance is 51 inches, meaning that we must remove 9 inches from the cable tube assembly. Note, the final tube will be less than 51 inches. It is imperative that you measure the amount you are removing from the tube, not the amount you are keeping. Making the cut incorrectly will render the tube assembly unusable. You can see here that we are measuring the amount we are removing. In this case, it is 9 inches. Cut the tube in a valley or groove instead of a ridge. 
If the 9 inch measurement falls on a ridge, it's better to err on the lower side of the 9 inch mark, say 8 and 7 eighths. Cut slowly so that a clean and even cut is made. Cutting the holes in the drywall is probably the most challenging part of the installation process. It is very important to follow these instructions exactly, otherwise you will not have a guide to complete the cut and you may have to finish cutting by hand. Start by aligning the pilot drill of the hole saw with one of the center marks. Make sure that the drill axis is perpendicular with the wall surface and that the saw teeth contact the drywall evenly. Don't drill too fast and don't push very hard. Cut only about one quarter of an inch into the drywall. Do not cut all of the way through. Move the pilot drill to the second center mark. Drill slowly all of the way through. Remove the drywall core from the hole saw. Return to the first cut, drilling slowly and pushing lightly. Cut all of the way through the drywall. Take a look at the coupler. You will notice a gasket on each side of the coupler. Make sure that the gaskets are completely seated on each side before attaching the tubes. Insert the tubes as far as possible. Notice that there are gaskets in the tube port of each box. Make sure they are completely seated. Watch the sides of the port to make sure that the tube does not get stuck as you insert the tube as far as possible. Look inside the box to make sure that the tube is fully contacting the gasket and inserted as far as possible. Insert the fish tape into the bottom hole. If there is insulation in the wall, try to bias it against the back of the drywall sheet. Once the fish tape has appeared at the top hole, hook the tube assembly to the fish tape and pull the fish tape and the tube assembly down to the bottom hole. Attach the NM cord to the box. Make sure that it is completely seated and that both clips have snapped over the plug. Now it's time to attach the cable tube to the box. Make sure that the gasket is completely seated. Insert the tube as far as possible. Look inside the box to make sure that the tube is fully contacting the gasket and insert it as far as possible. Push the box into the bottom hole. Make sure to align the box vertically and bias it to the bottom of the hole. Tighten the screws. Snap the faceplate to the box. There are four snaps. Make sure that you hear all four snaps engage. There is a gasket on the back side of the faceplate. You may have to squeeze the box and faceplate together in order to compress the gasket and provide a good air seal. Push the top box into the top hole. Again, align the box vertically and tighten the screws. Snap the faceplate to the box as before. Push the cables down through the cable tube until they come through the bottom box. Pull the low voltage cables out of the bottom box and connect them to your home theater equipment. Plug in your TV. Plug in the power cord into a nearby receptacle. You're all done! This product helps to beautify your home, allowing you to place one to four television cables within the wall. The air-free method also restricts the flow of expensive conditioned air to the outside of the building envelope and provides a cable tube or conduit within the wall to make it easy to add or remove cables as needed. For example, if you had a gaming console and you wanted to move it to a different room, you can simply pull the cables out and replace them without reinstalling the system. The standard installation method mentioned earlier allows for the installation of more than four cords. The kit includes a top box set consisting of a low voltage cable box and a power receptacle box. A bottom box set consisting of a low voltage cable box and a power inlet box.
two face plates, an NM cord, and a power cord. The kit also includes a cable tube or conduit, which is actually comprised of two tubes and a coupler, a fish stick, a hole saw, and some rubber bands. Tools needed for the installation include a level, a pencil, a utility knife, a tape measure, and a Phillips screwdriver or a drill with a Phillips bit. You may also want to have a stud finder handy. Locate the studs within the wall in the vicinity of the television. The boxes need to be spaced at least two and a half inches away from any stud. Mark the nearby studs. Most studs are on 16 inch centers. Occasionally, depending on the construction of the house, other studs may be present. It's better to know where they all are before beginning the installation. You also need to have a receptacle nearby. You may want to place your bottom box such that it is level with the receptacle. Measure and mark the wall accordingly. Place another mark on the wall that is at least two and a half inches from the nearest stud to make sure the box installs easily. Now transfer that mark up the wall to a location behind the television. Although not shown here, it is a good idea to mark the bottom of the television on the wall. Place a faceplate on the wall and make sure that your top mark is well above the bottom of the television so that the faceplate does not show after installation. This kit allows for a maximum installation distance of 60 inches. Start by assembling the tubes to the coupler. Take a look at the coupler. You will notice a gasket on each side of the coupler. Make sure that the gaskets are completely seated on each side before attaching the tubes. Insert the tubes as far as possible. This kit allows for a maximum installation distance of 60 inches. Start by assembling the tubes to the coupler. Make sure that the overall length is 56.5 inches long. If it is longer, trim the excess with a utility knife. The overall tube length must be exactly 3.5 inches shorter than the installation distance that is marked on the wall. If your installation distance is shorter than 60 inches, you will have to trim the tube even further. In our installation example, the installation distance is 51 inches, meaning we must remove 9 inches from the cable tube assembly. It is imperative that you measure the amount you are removing from the tube, not the amount you are keeping. Making the cut incorrectly will render the tube assembly unusable. You can see here that we are measuring the amount we are removing. In this case, it is 9 inches. Cut the tube in a valley or groove instead of a ridge. If the 9 inch measurement falls on a ridge, it's better to err on the lower side of the 9 inch mark, say 8 and 7 eighths. Cut slowly so that a clean and even cut is made. Start by aligning the pilot drill of the hole saw with one of the center marks. Make sure that the drill axis is perpendicular with the wall surface and that the saw teeth contact the drywall evenly. Don't drill too fast and don't push very hard. Remove the drywall core from the hole saw. Cut the second hole. To assemble the fish stick, align the ends and push them together until they snap. Repeat for each section. Notice that there are gaskets in the tube port of each low voltage box. Make sure they are completely seated. Insert the tube as far as possible. Straighten the NM cord and use the rubber bands to secure the NM cord to the back side of the tube. Leave some slack between the top receptacle box and the low voltage box. Insert the fish stick into the bottom hole. If there is insulation in the wall, try to bias the fish stick to the back side of the drywall sheet. Once the fish stick has appeared at the top hole, hook the assembly to the fish stick and pull the assembly toward the bottom hole. Remove the fish stick. Do not push the power receptacle box into the wall just yet. Place the fish stick through the tube and through the top low voltage box. Leave some of the fish stick protruding out of the top hole and out of the bottom hole. Now push the top low voltage box back carefully into the wall cavity so that the tube can be pulled out of the bottom hole. Be very careful not to drop the assembly into the wall cavity. You could even use some masking tape to help hold the fish stick in place. 
grasp the tube at the bottom hole and push the bottom low voltage box onto the tube. Then pull the top low voltage box back into place. Remove the fish stick. Make sure the bottom low voltage box is biased at the top of the bottom hole and that the top low voltage box is biased at the bottom of the top hole. Push the top receptacle box into place. Pull the inlet through the power inlet box. Be careful not to overstress or scratch the NM cable. Assemble the box insert onto the receptacle end. Gently push the box insert backwards into the box until all four snap features are holding the box insert into place. Note, the snap features are intended to permanently retain the box insert, so make sure you are ready for this step. Again, the insert is intended to be retained within the box, but if for some reason access is needed, the insert can be removed using one or two small screwdrivers. Start on the sides by inserting a screwdriver near the side snap features. Gently pry the sides of the insert and push the insert forward. Once the insert has overcome the side snap features, move the screwdriver to the top and bottom snap features. Push the insert forward until it comes loose of the box. Push the power inlet box into place. You may need to manipulate the NM cord slightly, but again, make sure not to overstress or scratch the cord. Look at the bottom box set and adjust them until they are positioned correctly. Tighten the mounting screws. Note, be very careful to maintain constant pressure on the screw heads and do not over tighten the screws. You just need to make them snug and slightly compress the gaskets. Move to the top box set and repeat. Push the cables into the low voltage box and continue feeding until they are protruding from the top box and the bottom box. Pull the low voltage cables through the rubber membrane in the faceplate and snap the faceplate to the box set. Make sure all four snaps engage. Plug the TV power cord into the receptacle. Plug the power supply cord to the inlet and the nearby receptacle. Connect the low voltage cables to the TV and to the home theater equipment. You're all done.